In this video, I'm going to show you how to catch carp with the very popular zig rig. Now the zig rig is basically a tactic which allows you to present a hook bait mid water, not on the bottom, neither on the surface, but somewhere in between. Now there is one exception to this where you can fish a zig rig over depth on the surface, but I'll talk a bit about that later on in the video. But basically how a zig rig works is that you have a lead weight on the bottom and a length of monofilament line and a buoyant hook bait attached which pops up off the lead. So say you were to tie up a zig rig three foot long, your bait would be suspended three foot off the lake bed. Lots of people incorporate zig rigs into their fishing because carp actually don't spend all their time feeding on the bottom. They spend an awful lot of time cruising around mid-water, feeding on the natural food available to them. There's lots of water bugs and stuff like that, and that is a big part of the uh, carp's diet. And basically what you're doing with the zig rig is imitating uh, their natural food, which is suspended mid-water. To tie a zig rig, you will need the following components. A tail rubber and lead clip, a size eight swivel, your chosen size swivel lead, this depends on your particular fishing situation and how far you need to cast. A spool of zig line, this comes in a few different breaking strains, so pick one that suits the water you're fishing. A size 8, 10 or 12 mixer hook, normally the spookier the carp, the smaller the hook will use. Your chosen zig hook bait, here I'm just using a small pop-up, but a small piece of foam like this would also do the job perfectly an anti-tangle sleeve, and lastly, you'll need a baiting needle, bait stops, and a pair of scissors. Start off by threading the tail rubber and lead clip onto your main line. Next, tie on a size eight swivel. We like to use a simple half blood knot, passing the line through the eye of the swivel before wrapping the line around itself around seven times and threading it back through the hole you created. You can now pull the swivel into the back of the lead clip. It should click into place. Take the swivel lead and thread it onto the lead clip and push the tail rubber lightly over the top. You've now made up the lead system, so next all you need to do is tie up the actual hook link section. Take off your chosen length of zig line. I'm going to just use a short length for demonstrational purposes. In one end, you need to tie a small overhand loop knot to act as your hair to thread your hook bait onto. Take your chosen hook bait and thread it onto a baiting needle and then onto the loop you just created. Hold the bait in place with a bait stop. Now it's time to attach your hook. Thread the other end of your hook link through the back of the eye of your hook. Pull it up tight to the bait so it sits like this. Now you need to tie a knotless knot, wrapping the line round the shank of the hook seven or eight times before pushing the line back through the eye of the hook and pulling it tight. With the hook and bait attached, you can now thread on your anti-tangle sleeve onto the hook link. Make sure you thread it on the correct way. Next, tie a loop in the end of the hook link. A figure of eight loop knot will do the job perfectly. To attach the loop to the swivel on the lead clip, simply thread the loop through the hole in the swivel before passing the rest of the zig rig through the same loop and pull it down tight. Your zig rig is now complete. As you can see, the sleeve here helps avoid tangles. However, you are bound to get tangled every now and then with such a long hook link like this. Now we have a couple of tricks for avoiding less tangles when fishing zig rigs and firstly it's feathering the line. So on the cast you use either your forefinger or your other hand to just lightly touch the spool as the rig goes out. By doing this you're slowing down the rig in the air and you're separating the hook bait from the lead clip setup. And then another thing we like to do which almost eradicates uh, tangles is to completely stop the rig just before it hits the surface. So we make a cast, feather it slowly, then just before it hits the surface of the water, we stop it completely. And this really helps uh, separate the rig uh, from the lead. We actually use that method of uh, casting and feathering with almost every type of fishing we do, as it just really helps avoid tangles. Another thing you can do is use PVA. So you can make up a, a small PVA bag of anything you like really, uh, we often just use a couple of dog biscuits in a small bag, hook that onto the hook, and this just makes the hook bait area of the rig heavier, and so also aids in separating the hook bait and the lead. You can also just use 
a couple of pieces of PVA foam for this too. Next thing we're going to look at is how to find the depth of water in front of your swim. And we're gonna head over to the bank now to demonstrate that. You might be wondering how to find the exact depth of water in front of your swim where you'd like to fish a zig rig. And I've come to a lake here to demonstrate. I've got a rod and a mark float set up. The reel I'm using actually has braid on it because it has no stretch. And this allows things to be a little more accurate rather than using mono which should have stretch in the line. The marker float setup is quite simple. It just consists of a, uh, a marker lead. This one's three ounce, needs to be quite heavy. And this runs on the main line. And then tied to the end is just a marker float. A marker float is just a large float with a big, uh, buoyant, bright colored tip on the end. So you can see it easily when it pops up to the surface. And to use this and find the depth of water in front of you, first you need to cast it out. And then once it's hit the water, you need to tighten down until that float has pulled down to the lake bed. You'll know when this has happened because everything becomes a little more uh, solid and you can actually pull the rod tip round and you'll be able to feel the lead pulling across the bottom. So once the, the float is down by the lake bed, you can then slacken off the clutch on the reel and then start to pull line off the spool up to a marker on the rod. Now, by having a marker, this one's actually a specific marker floating rod, so it has a marker on it already, but you can use a bit of Tipex or an elastic band to make a marker on there. But by having that mark, you can pull off the same length of line each time, which means you can just count how many times you have to pull line off until that float pops up to the surface. So that took six lengths of line for that float to pop up on the surface, which means because this is about a foot in length, the depth of water out there is about six foot. So if I wanted to tie a zig rig half depth, I would measure my line up against this uh, foot long marker and I'd do three lengths of that. And that would be a three foot long zig that you cast out there and know that you're fishing exactly half depth. You can fish zig rigs in any depth of water. And in the past, we've actually had some decent success fishing them over depth. Now what this means is tying up a zig rig longer than the depth of water in front of your swim and fishing your hook baits on the surface. Now this might sound quite strange. Why would you do this when you can just fish a conventional surface rig with a controller float or free lining? Well, there's actually a few uh, advantages to this. Firstly, uh, when it's windy, fishing the over depth zigs it can be a lot more effective than fishing controller floats. The wind will very quickly uh, blow your float out of your swim and you have to keep recasting. But with the zig rig, because your hook bait is attached to your lead on the bottom, you don't have to do this. Your hook bait is anchored there and always there waiting for a bite. Secondly, this also means that you can easily fish uh, two rods or three rods at the same time. Uh, surface fishing uh, with a controller float with more than one rod can be uh, pretty hectic and not always uh, possible but with a zig rig you can just tie up your rigs cast them out put them down on the alarms and basically just wait for them to go off another thing that is pretty handy about the zig rig is that you can just concentrate on your feeding. Uh, we all know how important loose feeding is with surface fishing and because you don't need to hold the rod, the rod is down on the alarm, you, all you need to do is uh, have a bucket or a bait box of mixers or surface baits and you can just keep loose feeding uh, consistently little and often that is all you need to concentrate because the rigs are, are doing their job the fish will hook themselves against the weight of the lead to tie up an over depth zig you simply need to find out the depth of the water in front of your swim and then add on a few inches so that your bait is sitting on the surface the main reason why you miss bites with over depth zig rigs is because you're fishing too much over depth you the length of line laying on the surface is too great and fish when it picks up the bait there's a lot of slack in the line uh, before it tightens up to the lead and hooks itself on the bolt rig. So your aim with the over depth zig is to just lay the minimum amount of line possible on the surface. If you can get just an inch or two over depth 
that's when you're gonna have the best results. Thanks for watching the video about zig rigs. If you'd like to learn about plenty more other carp fishing tactics, then click on one of the videos on screen now. See you next time.